नानम परमम धेयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम वेलकम बैक स्टूडेंट्स वी पे लुकिंग एट अप्रॉक्सीमेटिंग एनी हायर ऑर्डर सिस्टम एज अ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर प्लस डेट टाइम एंड देर आर ब्रॉडली स्पीकिंग टू वेज ऑफ अप्रॉक्सीमेटिंग अ हायर ऑर्डर सिस्टम एनी हायर ऑर्डर सिस्टम इन टू फर्स्ट ऑर्डर प्लस डेट टाइम डिपेंड्स ऑन वॉट इन्फॉर्मेशन वी हैव अबाउट द प्रोसेस इधर वी मे हैव द एक्चुअल प्लान फ्रॉम विच वी कैन जनरेट सम डेटा so we may have raw data of the output variable as a function of time or we may also have the transfer function representation of the system uh, which is of higher order so we'll see in both these cases how do we approximate uh, this response as a first order plus date time so we'll start with uh, the case when we have the actual transfer function between the input and the output so what we have is a higher order transfer function which we want to approximate into first order plus date time model so uh, what we are essentially doing is uh, we are converting this as kp over tau s plus 1 e raised to minus td so uh, we need three unknowns what is the ultimate gain what is this time constant and what is the dead time given uh, the fact that we have the transfer function for this process so um, there are two methods uh, of doing this the first method is based on taylor series expansion and the other method is skoji stats half rule in both the cases uh, the notion of kp is the same so kp is gain between input and output so uh, for the given transfer function Uh, whatever is the gain between input and output uh, same uh, gain would get transferred to the final uh, approximate form the second term is how do we get tau so uh, tau as i had said it's a sort of a representation it is a mathematical entity uh, which just approximates or matches the given response with this approximated model uh, it does not have a direct physical significance uh, so when we talk about taylor series based method approximation tau is taken as the dominant time scale of the process and the by dominant we mean the slowest uh, time scale so uh, if our process transfer function uh, was uh, something like this s plus 1 to s plus 1 all the way up to 5 s plus 1 then uh, tau 1 is equal to 1 tau 2 is equal to 2 and tau 5 is equal to 5 so the slowest uh, mode out of this is coming from this 5 1 over 5 s plus 1 so in that case uh, we will be taking tau as 5 so it is the dominant or the slowest dynamic mode is taken as the time constant or tau in the case of skoji stats method what we take is tau is taken as dominant time scale plus half of the next dominant one
so uh, we are not relying only on the slowest time scale but we are looking at the top two uh, slow time scales of the process and in that case uh, for this particular example uh, what we would be getting is this tau will be equal to 5 plus half of the second slow so if it is s plus 1 2s plus 1 3s plus 1 4s plus 1 times 5s plus 1 it will be half of 4 so in that case we will get tau is equal to 7 so that way the tau obtained uh, for the same transfer function by using uh, Taylor series expansion or Squigister's method they are going to be different so the Squigister's method will give you higher tau value and then the last parameter which we want to get is TD which is the dead time. Uh, so the way we get the dead time uh, is uh, let us say if we look at the Taylor series expansion based method. So we look at uh, the remaining transfer function after we have removed tau. So in this case uh, the remaining transfer function was s plus 1, 2s plus 1, 3s plus 1 and 4s plus 1. So we approximate it as e s to minus t d s. Uh, the way we do it is uh, uh, we try to write uh, each of these. So let us say if I take s plus 1, uh, this is approximately equal to e raised to power 1 s because if you take Taylor series expansion of e raised to s, it will be 1 plus s plus s square over 2 factorial. So this is approximately equal to e raised to s which is equal to e raised to minus s. So similarly you can write that 2s plus 1 will approximate to be e raised to minus 2s. So this entire time this for this particular example it will be equal to e raised to minus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 s which is equal to e raised to minus 10 s. So your td will be equal to 10 in this case. So uh, to get the dead time you just approximate the remaining transfer function as a Taylor series approximation. In terms of Skogistad's method, uh, we follow the same approximation procedure. Uh, the only difference is uh, this 1 over 4s plus 1 uh, is approximated as uh, e raised to minus 4s. But uh, in terms of calculating tau, uh, we have already used half of this contribution. So that 2 out of that 4 was taken as tau. So in this case, uh, the contribution to dead time is also taken as half. So it will be half of 4, so it will be 2. So based on this, uh, the actual TD here will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus half of 4, so which comes out to be 8. So the dead time in the Squigistas method will be smaller. Uh, than what you get from the Taylor series approximation. So uh, for this particular example, so if gs uh, was equal, let us say equal to 1 over s plus 1, 2s plus 1, 3s plus 1, 4s plus 1, 5s plus 1, if this was the transfer function. Uh, what we get uh, is gain will be equal to 1 because the gain gets transferred directly. For the Taylor series based approximation, we get 1 over 5s plus 1 e raised to minus 10s and for Squigistad's method, we get 1 over 7s plus 1 e raised to minus 8s. So both these uh, are approximations uh, for this transfer function and if we plot a step response of this particular transfer function, you can see that uh, the response is shown here. Uh, the green line represents the actual response uh, where the step change was given at time t equal to 10 and you can see that uh, both these uh, models are approximating the behavior fairly uh, in the, with a good match uh, with uh, you can see that the red line is closer to the real response and that uh, corresponds to the Squigistad's rule. So it is a more uh, ex 
empirical method which was developed by Professor Kurgistad and uh, by just taking the second dominant scale and increasing the tau and while reducing the dead time it is able to match the, the response uh, in a much better way. Next we look at uh, if we do not have a transfer function representation of the process uh, but we have the actual process and how do we come up with this uh, first order plus dead time approximation. So, in that case what we do uh, is known as step testing of the plant. So, let us say we are interested in the relationship between, so we are interested in this output is y and input is u which we are going to represent as first order plus dead time model. So, what we do is uh, in the given plant we make a step change in u, let us say of magnitude a. and we record the response of y as a function of time. So, what we are going to get uh, is a response of this type. And when I say yt, it is always a deviation variable. We give a step change when the plant is at steady state and we record the response uh, as time goes on increasing away from this particular steady state and the typical response uh, what we will get will be of a sigmoidal nature. So, it will start at 0, take some time and then reach the final value. So, uh, from this, resp so this response you can record and then from this response uh, we would be able to find the values of kp, tau and td. So, in order to get kp, this is the gain of the process. So, it is the total change in y divided by total change in the input and this is at the final steady state. So, for this particular example, uh, the total change in y is going to be this. So, the ultimate value is this. So, the total change in y is this is delta y and delta let us call it as b. So, uh, the gain in this case will be equal to b over total change in input was a. So, the kp will be equal to b over a. So, that way we will be able to get the gain of this process. Let us now look at how do we get tau and td. So, let me redraw the same figure again. So, in order to get tau, uh, what we do is uh, we take slope of this uh, sigmoidal response at the inflection point. So, you we draw a tangent at the inflection point. So, which is somewhere here. So, let us say that tangent looks like this. So, this is the tangent at inflection point and let us say its slope is equal to s. So, from the first order dynamics uh, lecture, uh, you should remember, uh, you should recall uh, that uh, the slope of the first order response at time t equal to 0 uh, is given uh, by a k p over tau. So, we will use uh, make use of the same uh, relationship. So, in this case slope is s and a k p is nothing but b. So, b over tau. So, we will write tau as b over s. So, uh, this tau value which we are interested in is equal to the ultimate value of output y uh, divided by the slope of this tangent at the inflection point. And then lastly, uh, we are in now rem 
the only thing remaining is the dead time. Uh, so we take uh, whatever is the intersection of this tangent at time uh, to the time x is. So this intersection we take as TD. So this will be our dead time. So if we have the actual process and don't have a transfer function, uh, then using this method uh, we would be able to approximate this process as first order plus dead time. So this is a very common uh, way of any real plant data uh, would be analyzed uh, or and converted into first order plus dead time model. Now just uh, I would also like to make a small note uh, that uh, sometimes uh, the order of the system is very high and in that case uh, running a step uh, response and uh, trying to get the final output it takes a very long time. So in that case uh, the typical example of this would be uh, let us say if there is some dis uh, we are interested in finding the transfer function model uh, between uh, the product purities of the distillation column and the feed composition. Uh, we had seen this as a motivating example and the order of the system is uh, equal or is of the same order as that of the number of stages. So if the column has large number of stages this becomes a high order 20, 30 dynamic model and it takes a very long time to settle. Uh, so the response would typically in such a case if I say xd versus time, the response uh, would be so slow uh, that uh, it will take a long time uh, of the step testing uh, to reach the final steady state. So in that case uh, most of the time uh, these models would be used uh, to make uh, the initial predictions about how the system responds. So what we consider is uh, we just consider the response only up to this point and what we say is it is uh, similar or we approximate it not as a first order plus dead time but we consider that uh, the response is like some dead time followed by a ramp. So we approximate this as a ramp rather than a response of a first order process. So in that case uh, this is known as a first order plus integrator. So it is not a first order lag but it is a purely capacitive process for which the transfer function will be Kp over S e raised to minus T. So in this case the only two things which we are interested in is what is the dead time and what is the slope here which would give the value of gain Kp. So especially this type of approximation is made when the system is really of higher order and uh, it does not reach the final value in a foreseeable or whatever is your prediction horizon. So to summarize. Uh, we have seen that uh, in order to get a higher order process uh, it is typically a series combination of multiple first order system and uh, therefore they are typically over damped and rather than analyzing each of those orders separately uh, we typically convert them or approximate them as first order plus dead time model and that is the model which we will be using to make prediction or design a controller for that particular higher order system. And then that FOPDT model can be obtained either as an approximation of the original transfer function which we have generated or it can be obtained from the experimental data or the real plant data. So uh, we will stop this lecture here and in the next part of this lecture we will look at uh, the numerator dynamics. Thank you.